Not so long ago, I made a video where I reviewed the new gas burner from the Firebox stove. This is the one that would replace the Trangia gas burner uh, and ha at half the price, literally. And I gave it a really good review, and, except for one small thing. And that was, I found that when I turned the gas on full, the stove would sputter and half of the jets would uh, st cut out. And it made for a very efficient burn. It was actually much slower boiling water than it was even at half pressure. So I've learned what the problem was, and I want to share it with you. Keep watching. Okay, so after I made that video, uh, Steve at the Firebox stove saw it and reached out to me to have a discussion about it and what it was that I was missing. And I appreciate that, Steve, because I just didn't see this. But uh, I think what was going on was that I was one of what's known as an early adopter. I was one of the first so many people to have purchased this stove before it was even officially released. And Steve's information hadn't caught up with the purchases that were going out. So Steve explained to me what the issue was, why it was sputtering at full pressure, and I'll share it with you now. So what I didn't understand, and, it, and, it, and I guess it doesn't really apply to me as well, is the fact that the holes, the airflow holes, and these exist in all gas burners, it doesn't matter what type, the airflow holes right at the base, and I will give you some close-ups in a moment, were drilled larger than they normally are for a very specific reason. When this stove is used at high altitude and the air is rarefied, you need to get additional air into the burner to mix with the gases in order to get a uh, good combustion. However, at sea level, which is where I'm at, too much air was getting in. So more air that was getting in and more pressure was being created around the jets on the sides of the burner. And it was almost blowing itself out is the best way to say it. There was so much force coming through. It was just blowing out some of the jets. And uh, yeah, so that's what the issue was. Now, Steve had a, an a, a workaround for that. He had a little collar uh, on the side of it, and I, I remember showing this in the other video, and the collar could be rotated so that you could cover off the holes to any degree you want, from a tiny bit to completely cover off. And my understanding at that time was that you would cover off some of the hole so that you could change it from a clear blue intense flame to a lazy yellow uh, aesthetically pleasing flame with a lot less pressure and a lot less noise. Although if you close it off all the way, it was quite a sooty flame as well. So now I understand that it actually served two purposes. You could close off just a little bit of the hole and get a nice clean blue flame, not at full pressure, but a nice clean blue flame, but a much more efficient burn with much better boil times. And you can close it off all the way or anywhere in between to get that yellow flame that was so desirable and a part of the design. Now, the other thing is, and I'll give you a close up again, is that when Steve reached out to me, he also said that they had made a modification to the collar itself. So the first collar that came on the original stoves, in order to adjust it, you needed a pair of pliers. You, I doubt anybody could do it with their fingers. Maybe there's somebody that could, but I couldn't. So in order to adjust it in the field, I needed to have my multi-tool with me, my Leatherman, so that I could squeeze it together. It was kind of like a, a clamp that you, like a pipe clamp, I guess. Squeeze it together, rotate it a little bit, and then uh, let the pressure off so that it would stay there. Well, Steve's modification was just so simple. He foregone the clamp, the spring clamp, and now it's just a little turn collar that you can operate with your thumb easily. Not while it's on, of course, but while it's off. All right, I wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up of that, and once I've done that, I'm going to set it up in my firebox stove so that I can cook up my lunch, because the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is in response to a question. Uh, in the original video, I grilled a couple of sausages over the firebox stove, and the titanium diffuser plate allowed me to do that without having direct flame burning the sausages all to pieces. Well, the question was, is would that not also help with uh, boiling water, or not so much boiling water, but simmering water if you have a soup or if you have a fry pan and you want to diffuse the heat around the fry pan so that you don't have hot spots in the center. 
Absolutely, that's exactly what it was designed for. So the demonstration I want to do today is with a titanium pot and it's a soup that I'm going to be heating up on relatively low heat. But it's the type of soup that if you're not careful, you can burn to the bottom of your pot. All right, what I'm going to do is bring you in for a close-up of this and then we'll set up and I'll show the, the burner in action with the diffuser plate and the soup on. All right, once again, as a quick recap, right at the base of the stove here, you can see the holes that have been drilled, and there is four of them on all four sides. And they are intentional in any design, they're all designs have them, to allow air to come in and mix with the gas that's coming from the canister to get the effective uh, mixture for a clean burn on it. And what Steve had done is drilled these out to be a little larger so that more air can get in at high altitude. However, at lower altitudes like I'm at, too much air gets in there. And it just, like I said, it looks like it's trying to blow itself out. So what the intention is, is you can see the collar that's on this, and this collar is just thumb turnable, very easy to adjust. That's just a bit of an up, well, not a bit of an upgrade, a great upgrade from Steve. And all I need to do to make this efficient is just to cut off maybe not even a quarter, maybe a fifth of the hole. As you can see, it's just barely covering the hole right there. I might even just take it a little tiny bit further. And okay, that's all I need to prevent that sputtering from happening. And once again, if I want to have a nice orange flame for aesthetic reasons, then I can cover it off even more, even more, even more, right until it's completely cut off and it's just a, looks like a candle flame. But I want to have just a little bit covered off and now it'll work great. All right, I'll set it up in the stove and I'll get my lunch ready. Okay, that's uh, kind of a bright sunny day out here. So I'm gonna to have to create shadow over the burner if you're gonna see this. So, um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is two things. First, I will light the burner up, turn it up to full blast. Remember, it's got that tiny bit of occlusion or covering over of the hole. And I'm gonna bring my water to a boil on that without the simmer ring. I'm gonna turn the burner off, throw the simmer ring back on once my water is boiling and I add my soup just to save a little bit of time here. So take one of those burners off, gotta reach in. That's the only thing is you have to have a lighter you can reach in with. That's not showing up at all, is it? I'm trying to create shadow, but that's up at full blast. And that's putting out a tremendous amount of heat. And what I'm not seeing is the sputtering that I saw before. So great improvement. Now I understand how it works. Okay, I'll bring my water to a boil. We'll get the soup on and I'll demonstrate how the diffuser plate works with it. All right, I have my soup on. Let's see if I can show you the diffuser in action. I'm trying to create shadow for it. Can you see how the flame is all around the outside of the diffuser? Now, don't, don't make, make a mistake, that diffuser is hot. In fact, if it was any darker, you would see it start to glow red. And uh, I think I can probably turn the gas down a little bit on this. I don't need it even that hot. There, oh, that's a better, okay, that's a nice simmering heat, but still, I've got the heat all diffused around the outside. Now, likely in the steam, you're not going to see this but what I have is just like tiny bubbles in a bigger circle instead of a centrally bobbing up bubbling up so yeah it's a the diffuser is a great addition when you're making soups like this or fry pans I'm sure I'll show that in a future video as well and by the way spoiler alert if anybody's interested in fact I'm kind of reaching out to see if anybody has any experience I am working on a recipe that was suggested to me by one of my viewers based on the pemmican video I made. They asked me if I had ever made herbs worst. And herbs worst is an old German recipe. Okay, that's plenty hot. I've got to turn that down. An old German recipe that uses back bacon or pork bellies and pea flour and a few other ingredients to make something that is kind of like a sausage that is shelf stable, uh, easy to use, and you can eat it directly or you can do what I've done here which is to make a soup from it. Uh, this is one of my experimental versions. Getting some of the ingredients wasn't as easy as I thought it might be so I'm going to be working on this for a while but if anybody has any hints or suggestions on how to make herbs worst 
uh, then please put those in the comments section. Okay, right, I'm going to enjoy this and we'll just wrap up with a few closing comments. All right, just a few closing thoughts on the gas burner from Firebox Stove. So this really is a great alternative to the Trangia gas burner. So if you've been considering purchasing the Trangia gas burner but didn't like the cost of it, then take a look at this. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Plus, this burner has features that the Trangia just doesn't have, such as, of course, the diffuser plate. It is built for that, and as you saw, and I've used it a number of times, it works great for its intended purposes. And this burner has that collar around the bottom where you can adjust airflow going into the burner so that you can use it better at high altitude or shut the airflow down so that you get a more orange-yellow flame for aesthetic purposes. So there's a few more features on this than you get on the Trangia gas burner. So I'd recommend you consider that. Now, the other thing is, um, I'm not, I didn't go into a great deal of detail about the burner itself. So if you want to know more about it, I'd suggest you go back and watch my original video. It's a little bit longer. And I will, of course, link it at the end of this video if you're interested, because I demonstrate how it is installed in each of the different firebox stoves. So that may be of interest to you as well. Now, I just want to thank Steve Despain at Firebox Stove for, one, sending me the burner because he did send it to me originally, and two, contacted me and corrected me on my mistake. So thank you, Steve, so much for that. And I apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused or confusion it may have caused for people who were looking at purchasing in it. All right, the links for the burner will be in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.